everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we have a really exciting episode of Dive Out Weekly. I feel like the last few weeks of videos have been sort of coming to this moment, and today we are going to make some DIY sugar sprinkles to dye some yarn, but we're going to use Wilton's Violet Food Coloring. Now, if you are a longtime Chemnitz fan, you know I love purple and I love breaking violet. And I'll talk a little bit more about all of that in a moment. Today's video is sponsored by the viewer Lene. Lene, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and I'm really excited to dye some yarn for you. So when I say breaking violet, what does that mean? Purple food coloring is made up of a combination of usually pinks, pink pigments, and blue pigments. And these bind to yarn at different rates, which means that you can get the colors to separate. So when you have the purple, you'll see it separate into pink and blue, because the pink binds to the yarn significantly faster than the blue. And it, the one, the purple color breaking apart into these individual hues is what we refer to as color breaking. And I've played with breaking violet in many, many, many different ways. I even have a whole playlist dedicated to Broken Violet. Now, if you want to dye yarn with food coloring or with Wilton's Violet, you need to make sure you have the right tools assembled. You will need a protein-based fiber. Something like wool is probably the best choice, but other animal fibers like alpaca and silk also work really, really well. Uh, you will need the artificial food coloring, and we've got that little Wilton's icing tub uh, ready to go. You will need uh, some acid, which we are gonna use in the form of white vinegar, and then we'll need heat. And then the way that you combine all of these components is what will give you different effects um, in the way that the colors separate or don't separate. And it's something that I love to come back to and play with over and over again. And I'm really excited about this. Now, I think back before Dye Pot Weekly started and this, I created some broken violet speckles using a paintbrush on yarn. And this is a technique that I have revisited recently, um, earlier this year, but I haven't done this before. I have used purple sugar sprinkles, but those tend to be fairly pastel and not as pigmented as I want. So. Let's go make some sprinkles and then dye some yarn. Let's start with a heaping, well, I guess it's technically this is a tablespoon, a scoop spoon of white sugar. And now we're gonna add our gel color. I'm a bit undecided how to best do this. It's easier when you can do drops um, because if I do this with a measuring spoon, then there'll be the icing color in the measuring spoon and I won't be able to get it out. So I think I'm gonna take the same spoon as before dunk it in and get a good coating um, on it. And then I'm going to come in and attempt, this might not work. <laughs> oh no, we're starting, we're starting. Okay, okay, let me close this up. <laughs> okay, maybe the container that I have is just bad for this, but okay, slowly you see those specks going in. Um, okay, we're integrating with the sugar. It's just going to be real slow, and so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. I stirred and stirred and used a knife, and that wasn't working well, and it was just hard to get the, the icing color off the back of the spoon. I think it would have been easier if I had taken this and dissolved it in even a tiny bit of water first. I think overall um, it is possible to reconstitute this and to make the sugar sprinkles with the icing color, but I still don't feel like it's evenly mixed after a really long time of mixing and there is leftover color. So I think I would recommend going for liquid drops over the icing color or making the icing color liquid uh, before trying this. It's not bad. I'm going to let it dry out for maybe about an hour, um, but I mean it seems like it's pretty dry already. There's no question there are probably some really concentrated clumps in here, and I am sure that this will stain my fingers, but it is pigmented. And 
and we have a bit of color left, but we're almost ready to start trying this on yarn. I pre-soaked 200 grams of yarn in some plain tap water for about 30 minutes, and then I added two tablespoons of white vinegar to the pre-soak so that way the yarn would be acidic enough for the food coloring to bind. I took some yarn from our pre-soak and there's still about a fair amount of liquid left in the yarn itself uh, and we sort of want that because we want the sugar to be able to dissolve. I did protect the work surface with some plastic wrap uh, just so that way it'll make them cleaning up the mess a little easier. Uh, I plan to microwave one of the skeins and then, well, I think we're gonna do something else with one of the others, and I will tell you more about that when the time comes. But first, we're gonna take these beautiful violet sprinkles we created and add them to the yarn. I will go through and use my fingers, but I just, I was playing with it, with the spoon, and this actually works pretty well. Let me zoom you in. So I don't see color or anything yet, but we definitely have pigmentation there. If I go, and I'm not wearing gloves yet, but I take some with my fingers and start uh, layering it on here, I'm able to get a reasonable distribution. Uh, this does not feel as um, dry as, say, I was able to get with the brown from my previous times playing with this, but it is more easier to spread out than that yellow that I used. Um, which sort of makes sense that this is a gel versus liquid that we are starting with. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, my fingers are getting color. But now I am going to continue speckling this on. The question is going to be how long do I wait before adding more color to the other side. The size of these sprinkles and speckles vary a lot. Um, it was not the uh, most <laughs> homogeneous mixture when I created it originally, but I do want to be heavy and I'm curious if you can guess what you think the second way I'm going to set the color. Oh, 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 I see, I see breaking. I see breaking. Okay, I'm going to finish up the side and we're gonna let things sit for a bit and I will zoom you in to show where these are starting to strike and oh man, okay, this, I mean, this could be done probably with using uh, base pink and blue, but oh man, Oh man, oh man, oh man. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands. They're stained pink, but not quite as bad. Okay, but this right there is what I'm seeing that excites me. You can see the purple and that little bit of blue surrounding it. The red threes are gonna start striking even without any heat. And the blues, well, they spread further. And you can see little hints of this happening all around. Eek! I am really happy. There's some more over there too. I'm not sure if you can tell at this scale when we're zoomed out a bit, but so I do think I want to wait a little bit to let the color sort of sink in a little bit to let this magic happen. Because these specks are way smaller than what I could create with a paintbrush. <sighs> I'm so happy. I just set a timer for five minutes. I figure Things will spread a little bit as we move it, but we'll wait and then carry on. Now, Wilton does sell violet colored commercial sugar sprinkles. They are much more of a lavender color. I mean, if you looked at our bowl here, I mean, this color looks as deep as the pigmented icing color that that we use. So, uh, and I have done a video recently that had the purple in there. You don't see a lot of breaking, but it almost reads blue anyway, but they're also old. So I'm not 100% sure about the breaking that you see with those, but it's not this. This is different. And Lene, I am so, so excited. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, 
I've been wanting to do this and as soon as I did the other sprinkles video I wanted to do this and I was like no I'm gonna let it be its own moment and its own thing and I am really really excited these speckles are amazing I do find myself wishing a bit for some more pigmentation but even on those tiny ones you can see breaking all over the place. Not all of these spec sprinkles have sunk in, but uh, we're gonna flip and apply and flip and apply and flip and apply. Eek! Apply and flip and apply and flip became the name of the game here. I decided that I didn't need to wait five minutes in between each flip, but the reason why I wanted to do that waiting initially is because I wanted to see how they were gonna sink in and get a feel and a sense of how these speckles would react with our 100% superwash wool yarn. And I am very excited to apply more. And the more I do this, the more it feels worth the frustration of trying to mix this mix. But I am curious for the future if we will see similar effects if we do this with just making our own custom violet color. And my hypothesis is yes. But now that we've got sprinkles, speckles applied to our heart's content, we need to get ready to steam set the yarn. These aren't my sharpest speckles ever, but they are beautiful and broken and fun. Uh, I think now that we've flipped, and I did make sure to wash my hands each time before touching the yarn, but I think I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes and then we will heat set the yarn. All right, so skein one, I am going to pick up and place into a microwave safe bowl. Um, since everything that we're using today is kitchen safe, I'm comfortable using my kitchen pots and pans. I personally prefer to only use my microwave for food coloring, so if you don't have a microwave that you can use, you can steam set your yarn on like a steamer basket on the stove for about 30 minutes. But I will microwave this on high using two minute increments for a total of four minutes, um, checking to just make sure that it's hot to touch. And what about skein number two? Well, I thought it would be fun to just dip dye it into some of that pre-soak water, but hot. Uh, some of the color, like I think the pinks have mostly set even without heat and those blues are spreading. Uh, so I'm curious if we'll capture some of those brighter blues that we see in there, or if we'll end up with a more pastel blue overall. Um, we'll see if there's any differences at all. But I'm heating up that dye bath, and in a couple minutes, probably once the microwave is done, uh, we'll be ready to get started. In the pot, we've got we're just a little boil. Um, this is some of that same pre-soak water that we used before that had two tablespoons of vinegar with a bunch of water and I'm bringing over our yarn oh dear I don't want to pop it in yet but look at ah look at that okay I guess we're starting to go in I have no idea if the colors are going to just be well set or if they're going to spread or shift um oh I see some pinks spreading interesting uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if we get something that looks or feels at all different. I think it's going to depend a bit on how dissolved the various colors were. If anything, it feels like a lot of the blue, oh, that's why the blue is disappearing. It's getting pinker because the blue hasn't set yet. And so as we're going in, the blue is dissolving a bit in the water and spreading out, giving us a pinker yarn. So you can see, like, as the yarn goes in, I'm seeing a lot of blue, but then towards the bottom, it's mostly, like, pink and purple, and I think that's because those blues that we have, as I am moving it, are spreading out, and I think that we're gonna find that the base of this yarn is gonna feel quite different. Um, and I am starting to see it does look more sky blue. I was like, oh, this is weird. Those blues, they're, they're disappearing. And they really are disappearing. Like, as I move it, um, we see like, the water is very clear, but it's because the blues 
are being captured by the rest of the yarn. And so it's giving us something very different. But if anything, this illustrates how much uh, that red has already struck. Now, I've discussed this a little bit today. Uh, Woolen's Violet has blue number one and red number three. And of the five most common artificial food coloring molecules that we find in the United States, red three strikes the fastest. It's a little temperamental. In acidic conditions, it can start to crash out. And it nearly instantaneously strikes yarn, which is why we can see beautiful breaking like we've got here. Uh, blue number one, on the other hand, needs the most time the most amount of acid and heat and time to bind, which is why you get those beautiful blue halos, or in this case, our massive blue halo. So I am really, really excited. Um, I'm excited to compare the two. I thought it would just be fun to add like two slightly different ways to play with it. Now, this is not an example of what we might see low immersion if we're playing with these sprinkles and we've got some left over we'll be doing more videos with them so you'll see more from them in the future but i'm excited and for contrast here are the beautiful broken violet speckles that we have from our microwaved yarn um, now if we were to have that this one if we were to put it in a steamer basket on the stove top It would look just like this. It would be nearly indistinguishable So now I think I am going to heat this for about 10 minutes Turn off the heat let it cool let the microwave yarn cool and then we can go and wash them Let's wash our yarn We've got our dip dyed yarn and now you really see that pale blue and then our Broken Violet, which adding them into um, this water, you really see the difference. It's subtle, but there is a difference between the colors on both things. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding, um, but since we do have sugar in here, we will want to do some more rinses. And I'm going to add some clear dish soap. Um, I like to do that as a bleeding check and also just to wash the fiber, but I'm not seeing any bleeding. All of our color is in our yarn. So I'm going to wash out the soap, do a number of rinses, and then put this yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Oh, Lene, I am so, so excited. The Broken Violet Speckles are actually more pigmented than I thought. I was afraid that they were going to be a bit blown out. But even where they are blown out, there is enough contrast that you can see them really clearly. And then we have areas where they are not blown out at all and they are super, super pigmented and sharp. I can't say for sure what the difference is if it has a relation of the amount of time that the speckles sat on the yarn or if it has to do with where they were located in the steamer basket and how much liquid uh, accessed the yarn before it really started to set. But nevertheless, this is stunning. If there's ever a colorway that highlights how red three starts striking, even without heat, it is this yarn. We have pink speckles on a pastel blue base, and in some of them, you can see a little bit of a brighter blue spread. But as I dip the skein in and out of the pot, the blue sort of rinsed out of the skein and then slowly struck onto the backdrop. But the reds didn't. Those reds were pretty much locked in place already. I've played around with speckling and then dip dyeing skeins in the past, both pre-soaked with vinegar and not pre-soaked with vinegar. And I doubt if I had not had vinegar in this skein, then we probably wouldn't have captured those red speckles. Uh, if you're interested, that is an experiment I can try again in the future. But the contrast here is very, very different from what we had seen with acid dyes. There are no, there's no question that there are acid dyes that strike at a similar rate um, to the red number three, but some fluorescent colors do strike slower and I haven't tried this kind of thing with fluorescent colors, so I'm not sure. I just, I think that this kind of broken speckle thing that we see 
is fairly unique. And I think the closest things that I could think of that could do it with acid dyes would be something like maybe purple pop or maybe even radioactive uh, because those break with a halo. But I don't know, I like, I did this with food coloring, you guys. When I was making the sprinkles, I was then like, okay, this is a little bit of a pain. Maybe I need to do it differently. Maybe I should do it with color right and mix my own purple. And that might still be a better choice. But this was still so much easier than using a fork or a paintbrush to apply these broken violet speckles. This isn't to say that I wouldn't use the paintbrush because you get some bigger streaks and specks. Oh, let me grab that yarn. I mean, these feel different. And at the time I called these speckles and they are and they're broken, but they are much bigger than what we have over here. I might now call this more of a splotched colorway versus a speckled colorway. And so I still haven't quite recreated this at this level, but for a new, different version, I love these teeny speckles. The best thing about this is that there are so many variations you could do the, to the technique. Whether you mix different colors together, you're making your own sprinkles, so you have complete control over both the pigmentation and the depth and the tone of the color itself. I don't know if I've already said this in this video, but I want to try making my own DIY citric acid sprinkles with food coloring. I think that that could be really cool. And when it comes to the violet, it might make a little bit of a difference. Um, maybe you would get more purple because with more acid there, maybe things wouldn't break as much. We won't know until we try. Another thing I want to try is speckling with fluorescent dyes. Uh, will we see a little speckle and halo, something like this or what? So if you are interested in seeing some of these other experiments come to life, subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I would like to give Lene a huge, huge thank you for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pop Weekly. Uh, viewer sponsorship slots are fairly limited, especially uh, right now that time is more limited with everyone at home. But while you're waiting for more slots to open up, there is a lot of yarn in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop that has been dyed in past or upcoming videos. And so you can still bring home some yarn that I dyed. And it's a great way to support the content here. And I love getting to see what you turn the yarn into. I also have a Patreon and limited merch on Zazzle. You can find links to everything down in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.